Hi there, let's go ahead and wrap up unit 12 and 13 on psychotherapies, abnormal psychology, but also the treatment of abnormal psychology by talking about not just the different therapies that are out there, but evaluating them and really understanding do they work, what types work best for what disorder. And that's kind of what the gist of this quick set of notes will be about. Um, so this just kind of gives you a chart that shows that community mental health specialists provide the largest outpatient psychotherapy. Outpatient meaning the person does not live, nor do they stay overnight in an institution. They come for an appointment. Um, so this just shows you um, that physicians treating other professionals uh, as well as mental health specialists. This one, this pie chart shows that within the psychotherapies that cognitive therapies are most widely used. So kind of showing the different perspectives, the different types of therapies, but then psychoanalytic and finally family group therapies being, being the biggest of all of those. The biggest thing to take away from all of these notes and really evaluating psychotherapies in general is the idea that the client's and the clinician and the therapist's perceptions is what means the most. So it's almost kind of like the placebo effect, but you don't want to say that because you can't really prove it. But as long as their perception is that it is working, they will most likely improve. And they tend to sometimes even overestimate its effectiveness. So research shows though that treated patients were in fact 80% better than untreated patients and they showed this through something called meta-analysis and in your notes it, it lists that for you where it says meta-analysis kind of a third of the way down. It's the statistical combination of the results of large number of different studies. So they take a bunch of different studies and they compile them together. Um, and statistically combine them, right, to show that 80% of the patients who were 80% better, I'm sorry, than those who were untreated. We're going to kind of jump down then to almost the middle of the page where you've got three bullet points listing depression, specific phobia, and agoraphobia. And you can even list out what we have here in disorders and that it's really important for you to understand the different kinds of therapies that work specifically for the different types of disorders. So for depression, behavioral, cognitive, as well as interpersonal are all very effective. For anxiety, uh, it would include cognition and then getting them to get rid of those maladaptive thinking or thought process, the illogical thinking, the exposure to whatever is triggering the anxiety. Bulimia um, actually is on here listed as cognitive behavioral and getting them to see um, their wrong thoughts, the illogical thinking, as well as reinforcing their behavior when they, when they um, don't purge. So a phobia, this one's big. For a specific phobia, it's not just behavioral. As it's listed on your paper, it's exposure therapy, okay, which is a behavioral therapy. You expose them to whatever it is that triggers their fear so that they eventually realize it's not that bad. So no one type of therapy has been found to be superior, and that's listed here for you. Um, the key really is finding the right fit between the client and the clinician. We also talked, um, this is listed on the notes as well, under rules and rights in the therapeutic relationship. <clears throat> we talked a little bit about how a therapist has the power to put someone into a mental institution to where they have to stay there for an extensive amount of time. Um, the the clinic, clinician is very protected in the court of law and what they can and can't reveal with the confidentiality thing. But if you look at the last kind of paragraph of your notes, it says clients have rights too. They cannot be casually committed into a mental hospital by their therapist. And this is kind of a kicker. The therapist has to provide written notice, an opportunity for defense, meaning the client to defend themselves, a court hearing and a right and the right to take the Fifth Amendment um, to avoid self-incrimination. So there's a lot of different steps that a clinician has to take in order to admit someone into um, a mental institution.